Hey guys, pop quiz. What do King Saul and Amal Clooney have in common? Nothing that I'm aware of, except of course the kosher ninja. Hey everyone, my name is Joe, and I'm the Kosher Ninja. And we're planning and preparing my bucket list adventure, which is to hike through Israel from one end to the other later this year. I'm so glad you've stopped by, and while you're here, I hope you'll subscribe. But right now, we're taking a field trip. We're taking a field trip to the hill, not to be confused with that other hill, and we're here so that we can talk about Amal Clooney and the Kosher Ninja. So what does Amal Clooney and the hill for that matter have in common with the Kosher Ninja? Well, it turns out not an awful lot, but probably more than you might think. So while it seems a little bit off topic, it's not really. And if you keep watching, you'll find out why. Just to be clear, I have a great deal of respect for Amal from what little I know of her. And that was a fabulous outfit, wasn't it? You know the one I mean, the yellow one. And yes, we are on a first name basis. But I do have a beef, and my beef is this. I worry that people see her and think that she represents what it's like to be a human rights lawyer or a human rights advocate. And now, I'm sure I don't give people enough credit because most people, I'm sure, understand that she is an unusual, no, exceptionally unusual case. But still, it vexes me. See, the kosher ninja likes to say that she's into Israel and Kung Fu. But in reality, there are two things that she's focused on almost since day one. And those are Israel, as you know by now, and human rights specifically religious freedom as a human right. So for most of her adult life, the kosher ninja's alter ego has been a mild-mannered, more than occasionally unemployed legal professional by day, and a ninja warrior for human rights by night. She knows the challenges, both from her personal experience and from sharing in the experiences of friends and colleagues. There's the lack of sleep from working all hours in a race against time when you're trying to save the life of somebody across the planet whom you're never going to meet. And then you have to wake up in the morning to get to work and pay the bills. There's the burnout and depression from the lack of sleep and from the lack of progress and the constant barrage of horrible news that just goes to show how little value we place on life and on the most basic aspects of being human. Then there's the constant anxiety that comes from financial issues, from feelings of inadequacy, from questioning your own motives, and seeing the toll that fighting evil takes on your friends and colleagues, wanting to help but knowing that you can't. And the anxiety from having to constantly turn off your own humanity just to be able to do the human thing that needs to be done. And then, of course, there's the incessant guilt for taking a break, for not doing enough, for not feeling guilty, for not taking a break. And the effect that all these things, the burnout, the depression, the guilt, all of this can have on your confidence and self-esteem, not to mention the deeper impacts that this fight for human rights can have on a person's life. Now, none of these experiences are unusual. Many of them are shared by our neighborhood first responders and others in the community. But police, firefighters, paramedics, trauma surgeons, military personnel, our society supports these people financially for the work that they do and provides support systems to help deal with some of the uh, negative effects of the work that they do. And rightly so. We could argue about whether or not those support systems are adequate, but they exist. Human rights champions, on the other hand, get very little recognition or resources. 
oh sure, people are full of platitudes about what great work you're doing and how important it is, especially in public. And then they go off to their, I don't know, where do they go? Well, you go home to your holy underwear, ramen noodles, and never-ending SOSs and research and reports. And this brings us back to Amal. So I'm sure that Amal has experience with some of these things. Others, I'm not so sure. I have trouble seeing her eating ramen noodles for dinner or wearing holy underwear unless she wants to. And I can't see her living in someone's basement or sleeping on a friend's couch just because she can't afford her own place. And let's think about it, even if she did have to couch surf for a while, can you imagine what those couches would look like? Hmm, I wonder, does she have a gold toilet seat? I'm not trying to make fun of Amal Clooney or any international political figures, I promise. I admire her and I wish I had her energy and drive. Or well, maybe 10 years ago I wished I had her energy and drive. I think I'm pretty good with what I've got now. Truth is, I really wish I had her hair. Except I've decided she probably dyes it and I don't, so no, I don't even want her hair. No, I don't want to be a Mal Clooney, but I do admire her. Now about those people who pat human rights workers on the back and then go home to their three-car garages, beamers, and big screen TVs. There's nothing wrong with big screen TVs, Super Bowls, and big houses. Well, actually there's an awful lot wrong with big houses, but I digress. Certainly the unsung human rights advocates of this world sometimes dream of a nice house or a flashy car not to mention unholy underwear or being able to watch a movie without feeling guilty. But their true happiness comes from the satisfaction of being able to save somebody's life. So you're still wondering, what does any of this have to do with the Kosher Ninja's epic journey? Well, I'm going to be celebrating a birthday out on the trail, which reminds me, why don't you guys all guess which birthday? And friends and family, those of you who know, I know who you are, so you're disqualified, but the rest of you, why don't you try to guess which birthday I'll be celebrating on the trail? Put it in the comments down below. And um, not 100% promise here, but I'm going to uh, try to see if I can't get a Kosher Ninja t-shirt out to one lucky person who guesses right. So yeah, so I'll be celebrating my birthday and this journey is partly also an opportunity to reflect. I've stepped back from moonlighting for the last couple of years and it's a chance to kind of sit back, think of where I'm at and what I can still accomplish in life and where to go from here. And now the burning question I know you're all dying to hear the answer to. Will the Kosher Ninja run into George Clooney along the trail? Probably not. And even if she did, well, it seems he's taken. Plus, I'm a little bit of a cougar and he's what, 58? No, I'm much more likely to run into gaggles of scraggly 22-year-old military grads who are, quite frankly, a little bit young even for me. But I do have to say that those Israeli soldiers, they're hot. But seriously, the upshot of it all is, as you follow the Kosher Ninja along her journey, please think about the unsung heroes of human rights. Think about those survivors, the advocates, those who stand up and challenge their own regimes or who venture into foreign countries, risking their own lives to save someone else's or to speak truth to power. Think about those who never risk their lives, but who sacrifice their time and sleep, and sometimes their mental and physical health, quietly and steadfastly providing background support, doing research and writing reports that will probably never be read. Most importantly, don't forget to think about the millions of people around the world who still can't worship according to their conscience freely and in peace and security, 
but who do so anyways in the constant fear of being attacked in their sanctuaries or of maybe being tortured and killed just because of what they believe. If you believe that everyone should have the freedom to believe or not to believe or to worship or not to worship who or what they want, give me a thumbs up. And if you're as curious as I am about who the kosher ninja is going to meet along the Shvil, subscribe and share this video with your friends. And if you've ever hiked the Shvil or elsewhere in Israel or would like to, tell me about it in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget about those birthday guesses. So this week has been a little bit different than our other meetups, but it makes me even more excited to be sharing this journey with you. And I can't wait to see you again in a little more lighthearted vein. Oh, except next time we're going to be talking about security on the Shvil. <laughs> oh well. Until next time, thanks for watching and Shalom, eh? Think of <laughs> Chipmunk, where'd you go? Where'd you go, Chipmunk? Right there. Chipmunk. <laughs>